Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Roll Season 2 Week 1 Grand Finals. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are going to see Pro versus MFG once again. MFG trying to run it back. Again, though, it will require two best of threes for MFG to run it back, whereas Pro just needs to win the one, because that is how double elimination works. And we are already getting started on with the map bands as it is going to be, once again, MFG getting the bands and the pick. Which means it'll be down to whether or not Pro allows him to get Fallen Delph or Cobalt Dream. And once again, Shimmer Shore being banned out. Like, this is something that's been consistent. Okay, Akalon and Tangerine are out. I don't understand, but I guess it's... Oh, no, wait. I do understand. Because Pro is... Knows they can win on Fallen Dell or Cobalt Dream. Like, they know they can deal with the the commander strategy. But on a larger map like Acklin or Tangerine, I mean, I know they'd, I'm sure they'd be fine in terms of macro, but I could see it would be a very, it would be a very different game. Like, they know they can deal with beating Mammoth at their own game. So they might as well just do that. I think, I think it's a thinking. I'm, that's speculation on my part, but I'm really not sure. At any rate, oh yeah. So it also turns out, turns out Thirksy actually didn't realize that plates had been added as a feature at some point. So he is, or they are now extremely excited about that because that's news. Like considering the fact that the entire team was depending on having double factory, having plates as an option is huge for their overall way of playing. Certainly it'll help avoid the issue they had last time where they plopped jump bots and didn't know what to do about it. So with that, I just am curious how they're going to play this out. They're going to go for Fallen Dell once again, or what? I mean, I think Fallen Dell... I'm not sure Fallen Dell works better than Cobalt Dream. They seem to like Fallen Dell. They had the option. Hmm. Again, Cobalt Dream, that's going to be a flat map. A lot of Rover Micro to be relevant. Whereas Fallen Dell, Rovers aren't going to be as much of a concern, so less concern about being just out micro early game. Hmm. Same time the spiders came in last time and completely wrecked face. So, I don't know. So with that, we are just waiting on MFG to discuss the maps. How they want to play this. Again, best of three. And winner cannot pick, I believe, for the second map. And Crow mentioned before that the winner gets to ban three, and loser gets to pick. But also they can't pick a map they previously won on. So in the case of game three, should that happen, it that'll limit the maps available. At any rate, we are... Again, I'm thinking Fallendale. I think they might be concerned because last time they played Fallendale, they did lose because well, possibly jump plop, but definitely because they got surrounded in the center. Because Thirsty strategy is obviously go to the center, build up, and then try to work out from there. But that got countered hard. Fallen Dell and Double Dream, that works reasonably well. A map like Intersection of Titan Duel, that strategy doesn't get as much team support. Shimmer Shores that could also or Sapphire Shores that could also work. Not Shimmer Shores, Sapphire Shores that could work. Though it's much more macro oriented, which would play into pro more likely than into MFG. I'd probably be much better equipped to build up something to just completely demolish the commanders coming in. I mean, Cobalt Dream, I feel like, almost would be the better option because they're less likely to get spidered. But, I mean, decent use of rovers early on and then 
tanks are likely, so of course you throw in there a Cyclops or two and the commanders are done. Still, Zhao is waiting. Zhao is talking about the thing. And I expect Zhao is going to be... Well, I don't know. Zhao's just trying to work out some stuff. Okay, they're going for Titan Duel. That's news to me. Well, let's see what happens. Titan Duel certainly could play into the strategy, but again, I'm a little worried for them in terms of being split up and the fact that their opponents are going to be going for flat map factories. Tanks are really good at dealing with commanders. Hovercraft can be really good at dealing with commanders with lances. So I think they might be going into a trap. Still, that's what they're going for. That is the option. That is going to be... That is... I, st I still don't know. Because the thing is, it's going to be probably tank hover air coming in from pro. Because air works well on this map. Exists loves playing air. Tank... Oh, uh, maybe, maybe rovers, maybe tank rover. Again, I just could see Hovercraft working really well to deal with the commanders in the mid to late game. And, again, tank to deal with the commanders as well. So there's no reason not to work with that. I'm really curious to see what Pro's going to do to try to counter this. Still waiting on what exactly is going to be done. Okay, still waiting on Thirksy. You might not have been kidding about Thirksy needing a bit of a break, but it's been five minutes since then, so we should be fine. Huh, hopefully. Yeah, also I'm curious to see what's going to happen with... Alright, there we go. Start of the map. Start of the match. Game one of the grand... Oh, I should probably put that in here too. Uh, nah, I never, never bother. Scores at the top. All right, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. With that planning. Randy's fan going for tanks. That's one factory that I expected. Next factor. Again, it's air tank hover is what I expect coming out of pro. Possibly what they were flipping a coin on. So, that's more a question of how they decide to play that out because this is. Again, a situation where commanders are the main threat. I don't expect that, especially with Rar on the team, I don't expect that MFG is playing the long game of going for commanders to condition their opponent to doing anti-commander strats and then go for heavy macro high unit counts. First off, it's really easy to switch away from anti-commander strats to high unit count strat or anti-army strats. But it's... Because, like, anti-armor strats are kind of what you'd normally do by default anyway, and, well, you just make cheaper units, honestly. 
Anti-heavy units tend to be more specialized and often more expensive than anti-army units. I mean, the flip side, heavy units are also pretty expensive. So it kind of works out. But yeah, trying to condition into heavy, anti-heavy, and then switch from there into large armies doesn't really work on a per game basis. It might work in the middle of a match, like you only upgrade a commander a little bit, they build a bunch of anti-commander tools, and then you rush in with a bunch of raiders to just take them out completely. And now your opponent has to figure out what the hell you're going to do and mix them up during the game. But as a build option conditioning, no, that's, that's not going to work. So I expect we're going to be seeing, my, uh, basically, long story short, I expect that this game is going to be consistently Thirxy Rar and Zhao going for big commanders as their strategy. Oh, right, so they didn't realize they couldn't plop the plate, or... Okay, well, triple rover then. So yeah, double rover plus air coming in over from MFG Pro with tanks into... What are the others doing? What in the world? I mean, I guess... Push heavily... Oh! Oh! Okay. Yeah, they just, they're just going ham. It's like, yeah, you know what? That's, that's a thing. So, Cyclops right out of the gate. Everyone else just building up to make it easier to make that Cyclops, but that, that might not work. I mean, yes, that's the end game strategy for MFG, but they don't start with that. They start with scout units. They start with some Scorchers. They start with, well, or they were starting with Redbacks. They, they have armies to support their commanders. And the commanders are definitely the linchpin, but it's not, it's not a commander rush in the same sense that an early Cyclops would be designed for. So I don't, I don't know. This, I think Pro is going to be able to survive this, but I don't think it's the right move. I just don't think it'll can their game. Like, I think they're going to be fine. But only because Pro is a very strong team, like, they'll be able to switch out of this without too much trouble, I think. But honestly, I'm not entirely sure, because that's still 2200 metal being pushed into a unit that really isn't going to be doing a whole lot out of the gate. And honestly, isn't going to be relevant for another five minutes. Or, uh, yeah, somewhere around there. Three to five minutes. So, odd choice. I can understand why, but I think it was a little bit hasty. And actually, considering the circumstances, it almost feels like my earlier comments regarding conditioning might not actually be all that wrong. Going for the armies instead, like, Cyclops coming out early on means that, like, they've they actually have kind of succeeded. If they go for pure army, no bother getting the commanders, then the conditioning worked. But only because this is what they already play. They they play this this game with the support units that they allow that allows them to transition into heavy commander. But they don't start out with heavy commander. They start out with a typical game, knowing that they're probably gonna have to deal with army coming from their opponents. They can't just rush heavy commander. So they already had the contingency, and now Pro is having to deal with the fact. They're with the fact that they basically built a unit that's not going, potentially not gonna be useful at all this game. Especially having been scouted out. However, exist now plopping or exist plopping cloak. Okay, cloak and shield being thrown up as well, realizing, oh wait, crap, we have to actually support the Cyclops. Which, yeah, that makes sense. Oh man, bit of a shame didn't manage to get Exist Commander though, because I think Exist might have thrown out a plop just before their commander died, but that would have been huge if it didn't. Still, though, MFG managing to take quite a lot of the map in the process. And the Cyclops is still a threat, but more importantly, it's not the threat. Again, Thirxy's commander, or any commander, really isn't that important right now. It's a typical strategy, but this game is not the typical game. 
Stands the Cyclops is taking a fair amount of damage, but it's going to be able to tank this, no problem. The Commander might not be so lucky, though. Randy's Commander, having, however, been upgraded as well, still in a good position on top of the Glaze coming on top of the... Oh, actually, come to think of it. Armor. Massive amounts of armor. Good choice, actually. That was really smart. <laughs> Throwing the exact same thing back at them. Looks like it's just Randy going for that, though. Exist Commander upgraded once. Not a really big deal. And no upgrades from Randy fans, Randy's Fans Commander. But Randy basically doing the exact same strategy, just reversed. Though enough supporting units are in play. Again, the Cyclops, I mean, it is a heavy unit of its own. It is causing some problems. However, the Ravens are continuing to come up. Anti-air is just not very strong with Vandals. Cyclops goes down. 2,200 metal completely thrown away. Granted, this is still right next to Randy's commander. So if Randy's commander is still alive, the reclaim can still come in. But the air pad is up. The Ravens can come back very quickly. And the commander, well, it does have 5,000 HP. There are six Ravens. There's a bunch of other support forces on top of that. That commander is... Definitely looking like they're running on borrowed time right now. At the same time, the rest of the support forces are still coming in from a bit of a disadvantage. Pro, whoever has that reclaim, that is... That is still a lot. The fact that the reclaim is still in pro's control is the one thing that's putting MFG in an extremely precarious position in this game. And they haven't really been able to secure their expansions. They certainly can't secure the reclaim, or at least not the lion's share of it. Going to try for the side attacks. Not a bad idea, at least distracting away from the main target of the commander. Clearly, the strategy right now is trying to find weak points that... Wait, are they trying to kill Randy's commander? It looks like they're trying to find weak points that aren't Randy's commander. If I had to guess. All right, nailing the other commanders, nailing factories, that kind of thing. With this many ravens, you can do any of those if you want. Oh, I see. Must have been thinking about going for either Randy fans, Randy's fans' commander or going for the tank factory to stop another Cyclops from being built. Still got rid of Randy's fans' commander. It's one down, two to go. Is now starting the upgrade process and has a decent amount of support forces. Randy able to push in and... That's, again, a level four commander being upgraded further. Though it is purely a tank commander. It's not dealing a huge amount of damage. So it's not, honestly, really the priority. The real priority is getting rid of the support forces. That's what's going to be a problem. And of course, with the Cyclops down, so we can see already, MFG going for the commander upgrades. Raw already at level 3, already got the range and light particle beam. It's going, that's going down that path. Zao going down for missile launcher once again. Of course, the real thing is that the Reclaim has been taken by Pro. They have turned that back into army. They have made good use of it. Well, on the other hand, MFG continuing to go with his commander strategy. Randy's commander being the only one that's actually directly contesting that idea and not... Again, it's not an aggressive commander. It doesn't have much beyond... It has the base beam laser, so it's not that threatening. Ooh. Raven's coming in. Gonna go for the factory. Nice, actually, decent bait on that. Takes out the tank factory. There we go. That is the tank down. That is the Cyclops no longer available. I am actually really liking... Uh, I am really liking how MFG is playing this. They're going really cautious. Like, they're not pushing too hard. They have just... They have gone in. They have taken key targets where they need to. And they made sure that they don't overextend themselves. Just slowly but surely grind their way back in. And now they've basically opened things up. But again, they don't need to deal with Randy's commander. It's it's a roadblock, but don't, bo don't worry about it too much. And that's working. Our well, Randy's commander is still coming in. It is still being a problem for the fencers that were caught out. 
But again, map control is fairly even. Pro with a slight economic advantage thanks to the reclaim, but that's really the only thing. And if MFG is able to continue playing the safely, it should be fine. Again, it's just a matter of buying time. The Ravens continuously are going around the map, taking out key targets. And so long as they manage to do that, they will be able to clear everything out. Taking... Oh, nice. Taking... Oh, all but one welder. But still, that massively slows down the northeast, northeastern expansion. But again, that's the game. That is the game plan right now. Buy time for Ravens, sorry, for Rar's Ravens. Once that's all set up, well, once the, or as that gets set up, you just keep buying time until eventually everything else gets built up. The commanders get upgraded up. Still, economically, the, the advantage is pros by a small margin. But attrition-wise, it's kind of evening out. Ultimately, the Ravens are doing their job. Uh, they're taking out they're taking out economy, they're taking out factories, they're taking out commanders here and there. Now, Zao switching into cloak. Wait a sec. No, Zao switching into cloak bots. Just eating the tank factory, switching into cloak bots. Or not tank, rover. Eating the second rover factory and switching into cloak bots. Interesting choice. I'm a little curious what their plan... Oh, Phantoms. Yep. Yeah. yeah, of course. Go with the Phantoms. Get the anti-commander damage. I mean, the tough part is that Randy... 12,500! Okay, now they're going for range. They haven't switched into particular weapons, though. But, I mean, still got a lot of Ravens. You got a lot of Thunder... You got Thunderbirds on the field. I think... Do you? No, you don't. Never mind, just Ravens. But then, of course, you're gonna have the Phoenixes on top of that. Oof, bit of a waste of Ravens, though. Still, Rar's commander presenting a bit of a threat over the eastern side of the map. Randy's commander under some fire, but the outlaws are making it impossible for them to get too close. Still, though, Randy's commander going down fast, down to half HP already. The thing is, you know, the farther down it goes, the faster Ravens can take it out. Honestly, a lot of Scorchers surviving that is pretty big news, too. It's not an immense amount of reclaim given, and quite a lot of damage done. Phantom already on the board as well. Remember, coming in from Pro side, they've taken the southwest corner, they've taken the northeast corner, they're gradually just getting more and more of the map. This is... And attrition is evening out, too. Like, Randy's commander... It's working okay, and the idea of buying time was working okay, but the problem is that that time is no longer relevant. Rar's commander being stunned out. Bandits coming... Or, disarmed out, rather. Bandits coming to deal with it. Should be defended just fine. But that's still an issue, because... Buying time is not the strategy to go for when... The economic advantage and the continued increase of economic advantage is in pro's favor. Can Randy's commander... Honestly, it's a lightning rod. That's kind of what it's been doing. I mean, you have... You have this commander that is now getting more and more threatening. Like, it's getting the range up. It likely will be getting particle beam very soon. But it's also been a distraction from all this expansion going on. It's like the one thing holding the line is a single commander with support repair forces. That's it. And MFG simply hasn't decided if they want to focus that commander down and completely destroy it, potentially at the cost of quite a few units, or deal with stuff on the side, and then Indecision's basically ruined them. Fortunately, RAR having a bit of a hard time being the shot caller right now. I'm kind of surprised they aren't using voice chat, honestly. But at this point, Randy's Commander not even going for that particle beam, potentially. I think they will be, but just range lasers doing the job. Still, Rar's Commander showing why light particle beam is so important in terms of damage, but it's, again, not quite enough. Thunderbird coming in just off to the side, just Randy's fan able to hold on to that. 
Mm, just more health. Again, this entire game has been distract MFG with a single giant commander and then throw them off with army on the other side. And unfortunately, Zhao as well, they have their... I mean, we're talking... Crow and I were talking in previous games about Zhao being quite strong for their experience, but now we are seeing the inexperience work against them. Randy's commander able to take out Thurx's. It might go down in the process, but it is so tanky on top of having all these shields supporting it. It just likely isn't. I still was saying, yeah, Zhao, they're reasonably strong for their experience, but the lack of experience is showing in the fact that they're not... Like, they're not realizing the Phantoms really have to be used to deal with something like Randy's Commander. That is the only way in which it's useful. And, like, where to position units? And we see in the chat, shot calling from RAR to try to compensate, but ultimately, Zhao's inexperience is causing a massive misplacement of these Phantoms. Which as a result is leaving Randy's commander alive to continue to oppress the entirety of MFG's forces. I mean, this is pro... They've taken the map. They've won an attrition. Or they're winning... Not quite winning on attrition, but they've... They've won using attrition to take the map. That's the bigger win. Is map control off of the damage they've dealt. And Exist also going for a missile silo because why not? Get some fire on there. Get some infernos in. I think... I mean, I expect that would be the point. Although, maybe just not... Maybe no. Maybe Eos's. Yeah, go for the Eos's instead. That makes sense. Go for the Eos's. Set, set them up to nail Rar's commander directly. And then take them out that way. I mean, the sheer amount of value Rainy's commander has attained is... Only low because their cost is so high. <laughs> 7,000 metal worth. But still, that commander has been huge. More Ravens coming in to try to take it out. Rar's commander putting itself into a bit of a risky position along with the Scorchers. But there are just so many convicts repairing everything. It is not going down quickly. This, the riots aren't here, and they honestly kind of like the rippers really ought to be. Because remember, rippers can shoot through shields effectively, which is super relevant right now with all the convicts around. But it's not coming up. No, the Thunderbird Strike, Rar's Commander is disarmed, and that should be the decisive Thunderbird Strike of the game. Randy's Commander will be able to just push through here with no resistance. Zhao's Commander is, I think, still alive, but out of position completely. Rar's Commander, five seconds left before he's able to come back on... Or, yeah, not even five, but still. Barely looking back online, but the Bandit is able to get in the base with no resistance. Should be able to take out the Caretakers, will be able to take out the Air Pad, most likely... That's the biggest target, honestly, is the airpad. They can take out the airpad. That will basically jeopardize this, enti this entire strategy, but not even. It's going for the leak on the factory instead. Damage all around. Taking out the air factory. Dam trying to damage the air factory. Not quite enough. Unfortunately, no real damage actually dealt. A couple of caretakers go down, and that's it. But North, but MFG was not really in a position for that to matter. However, there's the EOSs. There's Zao's commander, and there's the crater where Zao's commander used to be. And again, that's the inexperience thing. We're seeing, like... MFG has won the game in the early game by taking momentum very early and very decisively and not letting their opponents take an inch. And this game started out actually really weirdly and honestly kind of strongly for MFG because they had, they had the larger army to work with. They had... Kind of their opponents were focusing so heavily on getting anti-commander damage. But, unfortunately, they just couldn't expand off that and really secure those expansions. I think if they had, and they'd been able to fight tooth and nail after their opponents started, after the pro started turning into factories, or turning to factories as their primary source of damage, it would have worked. But, unfortunately, they just didn't have that. And on top of Randy's commander being so tough, the repair has never really been addressed. Like, nothing coming for splash damage to address the fact that there's a half dozen convicts making sure Randy's commander doesn't die. Like, Randy's commander has taken good, I'd say, 100,000 damage this entire game. But everything has been repaired. But they've been brought to near death four or five times. Or maybe not 100,000, maybe 50,000, but still. That commander should have died five times over. And repair just meant they didn't. And that is game... Throwing in the towel. Pro takes it. <laughs> Big purple heart because took all the damage, tanked it, but... Yeah, Commander with the most damage. Did the most work. Kind of literally did beat MFG at their own game.
Yeah, and people pointing out in chat as well that Zhao, they're kind of stuck. The inexperience is showing, and... That's kind of the thing with the team, is that it's... They are reasonably strong, but there is an experience gap between most of the team and most of Pro. Which means Pro is better able to handle the long haul, better able to handle larger economic situations, and better able to handle when things go off the rails. Because like Pro completely shifted the momentum, and again, I didn't think it was going to work early on, and honestly, there was a lot of ways it couldn't have with the units that are available. Hell, even Dominatrices might have actually been a really good idea. <laughs> Given the double rover factory. Or Thunderbirds. I mean, really, Thunderbirds would have been great. Just at least slow down the damage being taken by support units, if not the, the Cyclops itself, allowing the Cyclops to be more heavily damaged. Because the Cyclops wasn't the problem. It was all of the units around the Cyclops, and then all of the units around Randy's commander. Like, those units were just tanks. They were just there to damage Sponge while everything else dealt the damage. But Rar wasn't really able to, wasn't really sure whether to go for the commander or whether to go for the expansions. And so the commander kept repairing and the expansions got built. Thirxy, after they lost their commander, they had support units, like, Scorchers milling around with fencers, but not nothing beyond that. And then Zhao was stuck trying to reclaim the bottom half of the, or bottom left corner of the map and never quite managed to get that back and was but was fixated on that. Their commander came in to help out. Randy's commander might have died, but that didn't happen. So unfortunately, it's just that's the longer games really expose experience gaps. And that's exactly what we saw here. But that is not the only game. There is in fact at least one more game because this is Grand Finals best of three. Not best of one. So, as it stands, again, the winner bans, the loser picks. So, the ban list this time around is Sapphire Shores, Fallendell, and Akalan Wastelands. With MFG being able to choose. I'm still curious why Akalan Wastelands keep getting banned. Sapphire Shores and Fallendell, I totally see. Cobalt Dream... I expect to be the map picked, but yeah, I don't, I don't understand why Ackland Wastelands keeps getting banned. So with that, it's, I'm actually trying to figure out what to do, because this is, this is it for them, potentially. If they lose this, the tournament's over. They get second place. I mean, granted, this is a weekly series, so they'll be back next week, most likely. But for this week, yeah, it's... This is getting down to the wire. Man, I am... I'm curious what is going to happen. It looks like there's a bit of a break being requested by MFG... Or at least by RAR, so we'll have to wait for that a little bit. Because... I mean, he probably needs to get water and just relax, but the thing is, it... Really is a question of strategy, because again, I think that it wasn't... Like, MFG had room. Pro went for a very risky strategy with that early Cyclops. And MFG did scout it, and I think it was just a matter of I think Thunderbird would have just done the trick, honestly. I think having that as a way of cleaning up the support units, allowing for everything else to come in and wipe out the Cyclops, just focus down hard, focus down the commander hard. That is still 2,000... Like, the thing was, the commander was the big deal. If the Cyclops had been destroyed and the commander wasn't there or also got destroyed, the reclaim would have gone to MFG, and then MFG could have turned that into a massive economic advantage, allowing them to push forward and win the game. But because Randy was able to reclaim that, Pro continuously had an economic advantage because of Randy's commander in the reclaim field. That was a that was it. And that honestly I don't think was really accounted for. Especially difficult because the commander kept going like Randy kept going for massive amounts of HP. To the point that I mean you couldn't one shot it with Raven. Well not with six Ravens. If it had more Ravens, yeah. 
But not with six ravens. Yeah, just... I don't know. Curious to see what's going to happen next, especially with the next map pick. I mean, they could try Titan Duel again if they really wanted to. They did lose on Titan Duel. They, it's possible for MFD to choose it twice, but I expect they're going to choose something else. I mean, Titan Duel didn't work. Cobalt Dream... Cobalt Dream might? I don't know. It's still similar. It's not like corner to corner, but it's... Well, it is actually corner to corner. It's just... No, it's corner to corner. Yeah, so it's still similar in concept. Yeah, it's a really tricky question. I mean, they might go. F they might go for intersection though, or, or I mean, Cobalt Dream is not super feast. Like, it doesn't have a huge amount of metal on it, so I could see them going for that as a way of making sure that. Oh yeah, and they are in fact doing that. Cobalt Dream is the pick. That is the map we will be playing on for what might be the last game for this tournament. MFG goes in to try to fight for their tournament life. And Pro just needs to take this one match and that'll be it. So we saw before already Cobalt Dream being played by MFG, and they were able to take pretty quickly the center of the map. And then from there, able to just push forward and continue to deal damage, wipe out BRB's entire force. But against Pro, I'm not sure how to do that. Oh, I see. Rant. Rar's having issues because they weren't able to spread bombers easily. That makes sense. Yeah, that is, that is a weird... There's a thing with zero case. There's a lot of neat little army command things that make it simpler, but each one of them has its own particular interaction with modifier keys, usually. So you have to memorize, like, what does control do? What does alt do? What does shift do? What does space do? Oh, actually, space is usually just do this before anything else. But the fact that space is a modifier is unusual. At any rate, yeah, it's how the different modifier keys work, different commands, is definitely one of those hidden things that's very difficult to figure out. Well, anyway, hopefully they get figured up in the next next week because, yeah, like I said, the UI can be a little bit... Of, I mean, granted, if that doesn't work, what you can do is literally just right-click on a unit, right-click on a bomber, right-click on a unit, right-click on a bomber, like, have all your bombers, right-click unit, right-click bomber, right-click right right -click bomber. It's slow. It doesn't take advantage of the cool UI features that Zero K has, but it's guaranteed to work. Because you're literally picking a target, deselecting one bomber, picking another target, and then by the end of it, each bomber has its own target. But yeah, I think it's alt area attack. So that area attack is a separate command from attack. Although I think if you hold the attack on, like, right-click in the unit and then drag, you get an area as well. 
So if you right click unit, drag to get a circle and then hold alt in the meantime as you release right click. I think that'll also do the trick to have bombers hit everything, like spread out to hit separate targets. If I'm wrong, then they'll hit targets one, the, they'll focus on one target until it's dead and then focus on the next target and focus on the next target in a line. But I think that's what happens if you don't hold alt while doing an area attack. And, oh, people ask about the soundtrack. That, this particular song is not the Magus theme. This is the village theme from 65 million BC. But the Magus theme is in one of the songs that comes on stream. Yeah, most of the, most of the music is a Chrono Trigger remix album. And the rest of it is jazz remixes from other games. Mostly Castlevania games. It's just, I found a bunch of stuff on OC Remix that was jazz stuff, and that jazz seemed to fit, so I went for that. Anyway, that's over now, as the game... Actually, no, it's not over now. The game's not going to start anytime soon yet. Still waiting on the players to set that up. All right. Oh, okay. Hovercraft... Hover Spider Rover... Air, Cloaky, and... Not sure what else. Well, Air, Cloaky so far. Not going for quite the same level of a gimmick strategy as last time. What is Randy going to be doing? Okay, Amphbots. Well, okay, maybe. Maybe go for Grizzly? I don't know. Well, hang on. No, no, no. Amphot's got more than that, because you have the Ducks... Ducks Narcissus at the beginning. Boys to slow stuff down. Bulk has to hold the line. Teleporters, the gin, Or you can throw stuff around with Lobster. I mean, the throwing and teleporting is kind of meh in this map, but... Boy, it could be really useful, actually. And Duck is at least handy to avoid issues with units coming in. Hey, but it flee on the top and is dead. Well, glad they tried it that time. This time, or rather, glad it was tried. I think we saw, yeah, BRB against Pro. Was it on this map? I think it was. I have to double check the replays. And at any rate, Flea did not go up there when it had the chance, which it could have, but it didn't. Oh no, this is Tangerine. No, no, that was that was MFG versus BRB, and BRB didn't go up to. Sorry, MFG didn't go up to deal with BRB's thing with the flea, but they did it this time. That's what it was. But again, Thirksy pushing forward, trying to get what they can out of their commander. Quite a lot of focus over the southern side of the map. But it's probably for the best. Zhao gets a lot more room to maneuver to build up. That's been really the strategy. Zhao's doing the expanding, while Thirksy and Rar have been doing the defending. And we saw from last game that tends to work really well. If Zhao's completely untouched, then the other, like they don't have to worry about the fact that they don't have a huge amount of experience knowing where to place units in combat. And Rar and Thirksy can focus way more on the front lines and just be confident in the fact that their economies are going to be sorted because Zhao is taking care of it. Still, it's hard to tell whether or not Thirsty is going to be pushed through this. Randy's fan with Glaives isn't getting a whole lot of mileage. But as the Ducks and Arches come in, it's going to be harder and harder for units to just dodge around. Hmm. Decent use of the dagger. Oh, almost decent use of the daggers. Didn't quite take out the Lotus. Fortunately, one dagger short. Anyway, we already are seeing Rar go for the commander upgrades. Thirksy as well. Actually, already up one level. Granted, again, Thirksy is generally the frontliner on this one. Pushing the center. A bit more of an even split than last game, though. Randy essentially taking the exact opposite side of Thirksy. So neither team quite having an advantage yet. 
Randy, however, not upgrading their commander at all. Thirxy is... Yeah, Thirxy and Rara again combining their forces. Zhao looking to hold the line over to the south side. Again, that's pretty much Zhao's job, is just hold the line with some defensive units in your commander. While Thirxy and Randy start dealing with everything else. Uh, sorry, Thirxy and Rara start dealing with everything else. Oh, Zhao going pretty aggressive, stopping Randy from expanding at all. Dude, Randy's commander might... No, Randy's commander is fine for now. Randy's commander is fine for now. But of course the thing is, you know, Cloakbots means, well, we're seeing Slings, but eventually it also means Phantoms. Both of which are going to be quite effective at dealing with the commanders. And it's just a matter of time for him getting his armies up. Still Randy's commander desperately setting up defensive forces. And there's the boys! Defensive forces have been set up well enough. That's the boys up. That's Zhao's commander in a really tight spot. Randy realizing, I just go in here. Does not matter. And they might be wrong. I mean, the boys aren't a bad choice, but still, they might be wrong about that. Still, Zhao again being far too aggressive. They do not have support forces. And the boys, the boys are an especially large threat. Because again, they slow down the commander. The commander's already slow, so now it slows down even farther. Basically meaning anything can catch up and kill them. That's the entire reason why Thirxy has sent up some daggers, because that's going to be necessary in case anything happens. Like, for instance, Thunderbirding, which being pointed out in the chat is a possibility. Uh, yep, there it is. Thunderbird, slightly off map, but it is there. Same time though, Thirxy and Rar are managing to maintain pressure over to the western side of the map. Putting Randy's man in existence in a slightly iffy position, but again, the slings are up. There's not a whole lot that's up for dealing with that right now. Nothing that can be spared from trying to save Zaz's commander from themselves. Why is Zaz's commander continuing to insist on going forward? I do not understand. They cannot fight skirmishers with a riot commander that hasn't been fully set up yet, and that is going to cost them their commander going down. There it is. Zaz's commander goes down to boys and their own recklessness. I, mean, I hate to be overcritical there, but really, boys counter. I mean, most boys in general are a great counter to commanders, so do not push your commander into them. If you have the range advantage, like if that was fully set up, I think that would have been okay because I think it's about 600, no, 450 almost. So yeah, if the range boosters had been fully set up on the light particle beams, then it would have been fine, but they hadn't been. So like Ferrar's commander, for instance. They're not even fine yet. Needs to be the full complement of eight range boosters. Eight advanced starting systems to be able to actually counter the boys directly. And besides that, Zhao had no support units. So now Randy's going to be able to take out the entire eastern side of the map and from there, pincer MFG. Thirxy and Rar are desperately depending on using these commanders to push forward, but unfortunately they can't easily do that either. Not safely, at least. Not unless the number goes down, which it almost did. But 80 health leaving it up means Thirxy and Rar are limited in how much they can approach. I mean, on top of the fact that one wrong move sends two dozen... Yeah, about two dozen glaives at them. Yes, exactly. Okay, well. Yeah, one wrong move sends two dozen glaives at their commanders, which they're reasonably equipped to defend, but that could still be a massive blow. On the other hand, Lance is coming out here for Thirxy. Interesting move. I mean, Randy's commander being as far forward as it is a Lance is a smart choice. Because at this point, Thirxy basically has to save Zhao. I have to save the eastern side of the map. Zhao has a few units to try to handle it, but isn't building anymore. Doesn't really have a whole lot else being constructed, and their metal riders are slowly being eroded. All at the same time, exists? Oh, interesting. D-Gun Cloak. So going for an ultimatum, Commander. Smart choice. I mean, granted, if it gets found out, it is actually not even dead. Level 5, just the base HP has gone to the point that it really doesn't have to worry. Still, though, we're seeing Rar and Thirsty trying to bait out these glaives. Trying to get them out of position. Risky, though, exists. Commander getting dangerously close. 
has to be careful. Exist super mindful of the commander positioning, and Rar and Thirksy have no idea the commander is here. But I'm gonna be careful. One wrong move by Rar's commander. Commander! Oh, Exist Commander has been spotted though. And that might no, it's not gonna is that gonna kill it? No, the glaives saved the day. The glaive's coming in to try to take care of Rar's commander. But unfortunately, too many right. Oh no! Is that not enough? Venom's coming to try to save the day, but it's not. <gasps> Almost not quite enough. A Rar's commander has to keep moving. One bad shot from the slings will finish it off. Thankfully for it, it got enough auto repair that's able to get itself out of that dire situation quickly. But that was scary for a few seconds. Rar very nearly lost their commander there. Granted, so did Exist. But more importantly, Exist's commander has been exposed. The fact that there is a cloaked commander on the map is a huge deal. However, Randy's commander still up. It's going for the upgrades itself, and unfortunately, it can't really be focused on. At the same time, the Grizzly coming in, as expected, to help deal with the commander. Though, Lance on the other side. So both, both teams going for the same idea. High alpha, long range units to get rid of the commander directly. I mean, it's a solid choice. But unfortunately, Pro has managed to just get an economic advantage this entire time. They've been, again, as Zao has lost their commander, they lost their, their part of the map. They lost their lane. Randy's been able to take over and turn that into a massive economic advantage. As a result, they really don't have to worry about much. Even with attrition in MFG's favor, it's just not happening. Still, Lance coming in for the Grizzly. The Grizzly on too frequent a reload timing. Rar's commander should be able to help out. It's a little iffy, though. Rar's commander's going to get nailed, but just shields. It's just shields. The next shot, however, is not going to be just shields. It is, however, going to be weirdly aimed. Cloak Dagger's coming in as well. The, the Lance looking to finish the job, but no, it's not going to be able to. The Dagger's also unable to quite do so. The Bolas, however... At least managing to put some dents into the defensive turrets. However, Exist able to do their job perfectly, taking out Rar's commander in one fell or sorry, Thirsty's commander in one fell swoop. Rar's commander is still alive, but Thirsty is down. Exist's commander survives the assassination as well. That very likely is game. Very well played by Thirsty's commander there. Sorry, but, sorry not, ah, by Exist's commanders. Thirsty's commander, unfortunately, a little far forward. Not quite accounting for the positioning. Still, Phantom Lance to help get rid of the commander, help get rid of the Grizzlies. It's unfortunately unsupported. There's nothing else really providing much of a threat here. The firepower, of course, is primarily the commander. You get rid of that and not much else is left. That is the thing with the strategy. It can be very strong to push and deal a lot of damage, but there's no defense in depth. Now, a second Grizzly having joined the fight means there's honestly not much for it. One Lance or two Phantoms, that's 4,000 damage every 10 seconds or so. Not nearly enough to go to the Grizzlies, unfortunately. Top of the fact of Cloaked, Cloaked Sling is coming in here. Not to worry about range too much. Pushing Rar further and farther back and just giving Pro all the territory. I mean, 60 metal on this just the static metal on top of loads of reclaim. This is turning into a, a very, very... Like this is turning into a Sisyphean struggle as far as Rar is concerned. Like, I, again, think the team really should be using voice chat. I mean, it's clear they're not because they're typing stuff in, but it would be way easier to coordinate a lot of this stuff, especially given that Rar clearly is the one doing calling the shots, but... Mana Matter exists once again, coming in with that Assassin Commander. This might be the end of it, though, but it has done its job, and then some. So, Exist Commander goes down, but not... Er, there it goes. But not before taking out two of the... Two of the opposing commanders, and really the backbone of MFG's army. Randy over forced to retreat a little bit, I mean... Phantom's at least doing something of a job to get that pressure on, but it's just a matter of time. The moment Pro decides they can just push in, which is basically any time they want, they're just going to push in and take it. And it looks like 
That's exactly what Randy's, or that's exactly what Exist is going for. Glaive push to try to see what they can get. It's a decent amount, cracking up the lines, leaving, leaving only Tarantulas left. Ronan coming in as a follow-up to finish the job, and that leaves basically just the Phantoms, which are being scouted out, screened for, taken out immediately. Factory as well, essentially undefended. That is it. Pro going in for the kill, and MFG I had an interesting strategic idea going forward. Unfortunately, they just didn't have a whole lot of a game plan when that strategy fell apart. Anytime anyone died or anytime any lane was taken, they... Rar seemed to know what to do, but unfortunately wasn't quite able to communicate that as well as they needed to, and... Zhao, while they were playing relatively strong for their elo, for their experience, that lack of experience had just showed. And that was it. Pro takes it. 2-0. And that is it. That is the tournament. We are done for today. Half the time I thought it would take, actually. But yeah, that is it. So, congratulations to... Oh, wait, this isn't the picture I want. But yeah, congratulations to Pro and all the members of Pro, and also congratulations to the members of MFG and Baku Denta, Fruity, and Bloa for getting second and third place, respectively. Still played hard, MFG was still throwing in some interesting strategies I hadn't ever really thought about before. And found ways to make them work, but also, honestly, Pro kind of found ways to make them work better. <laughs> kind of embarrassingly, but yeah. Not gonna lie, Pro really did play, did outplay MFG at their own game. Especially for the Grand Finals. Anyhow, that is going to be it. So, thank you to Crow for organizing and for co-commentating in the winner's bracket matches. Thank you to all the players for joining and playing. We will, of course, be doing this on a, as a, on a weekly basis for the following probably... Nine, ten weeks again. Not quite sure exactly how it's going to work out, but I'm expecting it'll be nine weeks with another tenth kind of special week. And, of course, thank you to all of you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.